Hey hockey fans, this is uh, Josh. Uh, I am putting together a little walkthrough for getting your Raspberry Pi set up with the SD card image that I provided and the, the link is in the description uh, below. You can get the SD card. Um, just a couple of things. I've been having trouble getting this video to, to look good and clear enough so that when you when you read it um, you can see what's going on. So first thing, I used Win32 Disk Imager. Um, you can see that right here. Uh, once you get the the file, um, you just have to select uh, select the file that you want. Like it's in my Dropbox for you. Um, the the image file. I actually don't have it downloaded on here yet. But you select the image file that you want, and then write it to the SD card, and then slap that into your Raspberry Pi. Um, since I don't have, since I'm not on the Raspberry Pi right now, I'm going to um, going to tell you you have to get into your Raspberry Pi. So I'm going to jump into mine. The default username for the lo or login is Pi. The default user password is uh, Raspberry. Um, and so once you're into your Raspberry Pi and you've got in there, get into the terminal. And um, just in case you don't know any Linux commands, I'm going to become the root user, which allows me to really make any changes. So sudo su. I have this one set up. It won't ask you for passwords. So now you're the root user. A uh, couple other things you're going to need to know about here um, is that the Raspberry Pi is currently set up to work on my network, which means um, it is 1.116 is the address. So before you do this, you're going to need to open up a command window on your computer and check the IP config. Um, you want to see what your address is, what the network is, um, and you need to put your Raspberry Pi with an address on that network. So notice uh, a couple of the things here, the, the address, the net mask, all that kind of stuff. Because in the Raspberry Pi, I am going to use the text editor, and I have nano on here. Um, and I'm going to edit um, the file that's in the var directory. Uh, no, not the var directory, excuse me. The uh, Etsy directory network. Um, and the file is called interfaces. Um, and so when I pull that up, this is what it looks like, and you're going to see I need to you need to change all of your address, netmask, network so that it's on the correct network. I'm on network one. My Raspberry Pi has the address of 16. It broadcasts on 255. The gateway is 1.1, which matches the gateway that I have on my computer. Um, when you're done with that, Control X. Um, actually, let me let me do that again really quick. Um, if I make a change. Uh, control X will ask you if you want to save it. You'd say yes. Um, I'm going to say no. Uh, and then it'll ask you for the file name and just keep it the same file name, the interfaces, so that it, it goes. And then you're going to have to reboot your Raspberry Pi. There is a faster way to do it, but I don't remember it at, off the top of my head. So you can reboot it. It only takes a moment. Now that you have your Raspberry Pi set up, um, I use, uh, on your network, I use PuTTY, which is a free download and PuTTY you can log in. You notice I did it before by typing in the address to your Pi. It'll ask you for the login name, still Pi, the password still Raspberry, and you'll get in here. Now once you're in here there's a few important directories that you should know and I'm going to become the super user. Um, one of those directories is the CD, or excuse me, is the var directory. So I'm going to change directory um, and I'm going to go back to the root directory and then go into var www. This directory is where the um, all the website stuff is. So it's got PHP files and HTML files. It also has a folder here called buttons. Um, and in the buttons directory, and I'll just do it this way, um, in that buttons directory is all the, the pictures that I use on the buttons for my website. So just so that you see what that looks like, um, when you go to the website at 192.1.16, um, on your network, you can only have to do this from your network um, unless you want people from outside in the World Wide Web tripping your goal horn. Um, you'll see here are the buttons. Um, I have pictures for each one, and when I press on them, you'll notice in the bottom here it, it takes me to a PHP file. So let me show you how that works. So first of all, clicking on a button is going to uh, is going to basically pull up the the href, the, the hyperlink in the HTML and send you to a PHP. So let me show you the, um, I'll go nano, I'll just go more, more uh, index.html. Um, whoops, 
don't I have an in the oh I'm not in there so I'm gonna go back directory the two dots and the backslash I'm now in the var directory could have gone like this var dot w or slash www but um, let me uh, do the more index dot html um, you're gonna notice as I go down through here um, just a couple of the things that that happen so here is the main um, goal mine is the standard goal and let me widen this out just a little bit well, maybe not. Oh, it's it breaks over. So here is the href. It basically says, "Hey, I want you to select the standard goal um, PHP file when I click this button. The button is represented by this image, and you'll notice that it's in the buttons directory. It's a relative link, and it's the goal JPEG. So if I wanted to change the button, I would have to put a new picture in that buttons directory and put the new file name right here, um, as well as you might want to make a new PHP file." Um, for the standard goal. So you can do those same way, nano the index file, make those changes, um, and then get on with that. So let's just say then, for example, um, that I want to, uh, and I'm going to look in here again. Actually, let me clear this. Um, I want to make a new goal. So I usually use the standard goal. So I'm going to go um, copy the standard goal.php to a new one and let's make this a HOSA goal. And so basically what you're going to see in the standard goal is now going to be copied over into the HOSA goal. And let's take a look at that. Let's nano it. Nano the HOSA goal.php. We'll edit this text. It's going to basically make a call to a file that's in a different directory and I'll show you that in a second that is called goalhorn1. Well, since this is the HOSA goal, I'm going to make this HOSA, um, HOSA goal1. Alright, and I didn't do this for all of them, but that's how I would do it, because it takes two. This program, HOSA goal1, is actually going to turn the light on. Um, and then when it's done, it goes back to this address. So you should make this address whatever your, your uh, PI's address is again. So you're going to have to change all of those in each of the PHP files. That way when it it plays through the button, it goes back to where it started. Um, so now that I've changed that, my HOSA goal is going to the right spot. Let me show you where that goes to. The other important directory is the um, home pi goalhorn directory. And in here, you're going to notice that my things like goalhorn, each of them have two Python scripts and then a horn that goes along with it. Like the goalhorn 1 um, and goalhorn 2 the first one turns on the light and it basically says hey turn on the light and also start Goldhorn 2 program and the Goldhorn 2 program says hey play this song so I'm going to to copy those here really quick so let me copy Goldhorn 1 um, dot pi to Hosa Goal 1 dot pi and let me do the same thing with Goldhorn 2 And now I'm going to edit those two. So in here, you're going to notice there's a bunch of stuff going on. It basically, the GPIO is the pin that turns on the actual lamp. Um, I have mine wired into pin 7, which is how it's displayed on my diagram. Um, and you're going to see also that it starts this process. Um, so basically, this first script, HOSA Goal 1, is going to turn on the light. Um, it's going to also say, hey, I need you to play this program too. So this is where I'm going to put in HOSA goal 2.py. And it's also going to do this for 45 seconds. So notice this 45 seconds tells it how long it's going to do that. And there's some extra stuff in here. I just haven't cleaned it all up yet. But that will turn on the light and start the song. So I've made my changes. I'm going to save it. Now I'm going to edit the second one. Goal 2 is really short. All it does is actually um, starts the song. Now in a couple of these, and I might actually add this, but I need to change this. I'm going to make this uh, my Hosa Goal MP3, which I actually don't have in here yet. So let me make that Hosa Goal MP3. I don't have that file on here, um, but I'm going to save those changes. And um, then what I need to do is uh, just show you really quickly if you look at like the Taves goal that I have um, it goes Taves goal and then Taves.py this program oh it doesn't have it I know some of them do 
This one has an extra command in here. This command, the OS system parentheses and then the sudo pkill mpg321, stops the music player from playing the song that it's currently going on, which is nice in case you hit the button more than once. So, not a bad idea to do that. That's also the command that you will find in the stop goal. Um, well, maybe not. Uh, where is it? It's, I thought it was called stop goal, stop horn. Oh, maybe not. I don't know what's going on. Anyway, not sure which where that's at. So, um, so basically, we've edited the file. Now we need to put in maybe a new picture or something that I want in here. So, to do that, I use PSFTP, and it's going to look a lot like the what we were just working with. The only difference is. Um, we open whatever your address is, um, same username, same password, and you're going to be able to get in the directory and see the same thing. So I'm going to go to that um, host of goal directory. So cd home pi goal horn. And that is where, again, you'll notice this is where all my mp3s are. In order to put a, a song there, I usually um, just kind of, especially on Windows, it makes it a little bit easier. I find the song that I want. So let me go up. I want it to be called Goalhorn. So actually, let me go in here. I just have some of my DJ karaoke. I think I had one that I was messing around with on one of the earlier ones. Here's a hosa.mp3. Um, I'm going to rename it hosa goal mp3 because that's what I had it called in that program, if you remember. And basically, what I'm going to do is in the PSFTP editor, I'm going to type put, and then it's nice because I can just drag this file up here and drop it, and it puts it in. It, it puts in all the stuff from my documents on my computer, and then it shows it where it's going to go, um, as well. Or actually, it doesn't show it's going where it's going to go. It's going to go right in the directory I'm in. So when I hit enter, it puts it there. And now I'm going to go back over to the the, um, the SSH, the PuTTY, and show you that Hosagol is now in there. So now I have the whole goal MP3, and I can repeat that process. Just remember, if you're going to do an image, the images are all in um, the CD var ww buttons directory. And now you can grab an image. Um, you know, I can just grab a, a miscellaneous image. Let me just go Dropbox camera uploads. I can just grab an image like uh, here. This one's got Sharpie or whatever, but I can do the same thing. Put and I can drag this image up there. Now you can do a lot of these same things. Um, you can edit the the Raspberry Pi with um, with other uh, other programs or edit the uh, the HTML with other programs and scripts. You can do it on Windows and then just load them over to your Raspberry Pi if you're more comfortable with Notepad or you have a HTML editor. Um, but it's really nice. So basically, the workflow through here. Um, as I kind of outlined in this this readme file is um, basically the the same uh, when you click on something in the let me make this a little bit wider when you click on something in um, on the website it calls the PHP the PHP says um, go to this program start this Python script and then return to the the root directory again or the beginning of the website the index file this Python script says hey turn the light on this Python script says hey start the song um, and then that Python script plays whatever song you have in there so you have to edit each of those which is something eventually I would like to clean up but you have to edit each of those things in order to do it as well as edit the HTML if you want to put different buttons on there otherwise yours are all gonna have mine um, you know, I use the same buttons, I just change out the songs from time to time. Um, in order to make the songs, I usually use Audacity um, or something else, but that's the that's the basics. Um, like I said, you can find the, the files um, and this README text, the one I'm looking at right now, uh, in the description of the YouTube video. I hope that helps you out and gets you started. If you have any questions, feel free to, to comment, um, send me an email, um, or uh, you know, get in touch with me on the Reddit. The the post is on Reddit as well. I'm MLC Johnson 16, uh, and we'll see you. Go Hawks!